This video is sponsored by my friend Thomas Brush and his course Full Time Game Dev. Get a massive 40% discount using the link in the description. Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. In this video, we'll learn how to create stylish wiggly creatures using C Sharp and the line render component inside Unity. This can be used to create a variety of interesting characters. For example, you'll be able to create snakes which slither around the scene. The art style will be completely up to you. Or perhaps love crafting monsters with elegant tentacles. This makes for stylish animated movement without a single keyframe or animation clip being made. It all works with player inputs and some code. I learned this from Owen Sr., a fellow indie game developer and winner of the Blackthorn Prod Game Jam and GMTK Game Jam. He's made a variety of incredibly juicy and interesting worlds. I highly recommend you play his games, which are almost all free and they're fun and inspiring. While doing so, you'll notice some wiggly creatures, all made using the simple techniques I'm about to share. So thank you, Owen, for this knowledge. Let's all put it to good use. Let's start by creating this little monster. First of all, we need a head. So I'll drag and drop this head sprite into my empty Unity scene. Now I'll try and get this head rotating to face my mouse cursor. I'll create a C-sharp script called rotate to target and open that up inside Visual Studio. This is the chunk of code I'll be using. If you want the head to face something other than the cursor, you would simply need to change this tiny piece of code to a different transform or vector 2. I'll save the script and add it to my head. I'll set the rotation speed to something like 20 and you'll notice the head rotates to face the cursor. If it doesn't, Try tweaking the head sprite so it faces right. For more detail on how this rotation code works, I have a great tutorial from another game dev YouTuber linked in the description. With that done, let's get the head moving towards the mouse cursor. This is super easy. I'll make a vector to cursor pose variable and set that equal to the cursor's current coordinates. Then I'll use the classic transform.move towards function. This function needs three parameters: the current position, target position, and how fast it moves from one to the other. So we'll type transform.position and then cursor pose since we want to go from our current position to the cursor's position and I'll make a public float move speed variable which I'll plug in there without forgetting to multiply it with time.delta time. Set a move speed value in the inspector and it should all work fine. Now we get down to the seriously fun stuff. Tentacle creation. I'll make an empty game object called tentacle1 move it so it's right next to the head and parent it to the creature's head. Then I'll add a line render component. For this first example, this component will have a big impact on how the tentacle looks. You can always tweak these settings later. But for now, let's set two different positions so we can actually see the line. I'll add a simple sprite default material so we lose the magenta color. You can set end cap vertices to 1 to round off the tips of the line. You can change the color and opacity right here and the thickness of the tentacle using this graph. Note that you can add points to both the color gradient and size graph. So if, for example, you wanted a weird tentacle which alternates between thick and thin, you can add a bunch of points and place them so it resembles a roller coaster. The higher the point, the thicker the line. Now I'll make a script called tentacle and drag and drop it onto my tentacle1 game object. Again, this is Owen's script and invention, so make sure to thank him in the comments. Let's begin with a public float tentacle length variable. This will dictate how long and detailed each tentacle or trail is. Then we want a reference to the line render component. I'll set the line rend position counts to be equal to length. If we had only two positions, then we wouldn't be able to get much smooth slither-like motion. With five or more, it all becomes a lot more possible. I'll then make an array of vector threes called segment poses. And I will also set the size of this array to be equal to the length value. Now I want each point in my line render to smoothly follow the previous points. First of all, I'll make a public transform target dir variable. We'll drag and drop an empty game object parented to the tentacle inside of that in just a moment. And so we want the first point in our vector 3 array to be equal to the head's position. So we have the first point sorted out. But what about the others? Well, let's make a for loop that will run until i is greater than tentacle length. We'll also make sure i starts at 1 
since the first element in the array, which has an index of 0, has already been dealt with up here. So for each other element in the array, we want to smoothly move it towards the previous point. Point 1 follows point 0, point 2 follows point 1, and so on. We can use the smooth damp function, which gradually changes a vector towards a desired goal over time. This way we get that smooth follow-through motion, where the tip of the tentacle is the last bit to move. So let's type vector 3 smooth damp and begin by adding the point's current position and for the second parameter is the previous point in the array. We'll also add target.right multiplied by a target distance variable which I'll create up here. This makes sure that the points don't all bunch up but keep a certain distance away which is especially key when the creature is static. We also need a new vector 3 array for the smooth damp function's velocity which I'll make up here and set its size equal to length. Finally, I'll make a smooth speed variable to plug in here for the last parameter. This is how fast the point will reach its target. The smaller the value, the faster. For more info on the smooth damp function, you can check out Unity's documentation. So let's move on and finalize this little script by setting the line render points positions to be equal to the coordinates of the segment pose array. I'll save this and jump back into Unity. Let's make an empty game object parented to the tentacle called target dir. Make sure the red arrow points in this direction. I'll then drag that inside this empty slot. I'll set length equal to 30, target distance to 0.2, and smooth speed to something really small as well, like perhaps 0.05 or 0.02 will do the trick. And clicking play, you'll see I have a stylish tentacle. For simplicity's sake, you can leave the end of this smooth damp function with just the smooth speed value. But if you don't mind making an extra variable called trail speed and adding an i divided by trail speed at the end here, then you'll get a slightly nicer result. I'll type 350 for that new value in the inspector. You can then duplicate the tentacle and change the target dir rotation a little bit to have several wiggly bits and bobs following the creature. I have the line render of each tentacle set to a black color, and I quite like giving each a transparent tip so it seems to smoothly fade out. So, so have fun, experiment with that for a little, and then we can add some extra wiggly movement to the tentacles by making two float variables, a wiggle speed and wiggle magnitude, as well as a transform wiggler and then typing this in the update function. You can read more on mathf.sinewave via Unity's documentation. Now we need to parent the target dir to a new empty game object called wiggler, which I'll place right on top of target dir and drag and drop wiggler inside this empty slot in the inspector. Then I'll set wiggle speed to 10 and magnitude to 20. Speed dictates how fast, magnitude influences how pronounced each wave-like motion of the tentacle is. So those are some other settings to play around with for extra customization of your creature's procedural tentacle-like animation. From a visual's point of view, let's say you wanted to customize your tail, tentacle wing, or hair further. Something more than changing color, opacity, and thickness. Well, I've gone ahead for this example and made a weird tail sprite in Photoshop. I'll import that into Unity and then create a new material. This will be an unlit, transparent material. I'll drag and drop the sprite in there and then change the material inside of my line renderer from sprite default to the new material I've just created. And when I press play, you'll notice the sprite bends, warps, and wiggles to match the line renderer. The possibilities for stylish creatures and characters are practically endless. Now, what if you wanted the tentacles to be a lot less stretchy? Currently, when the creature stops moving, slows down or speeds up, the tentacles will grow longer or shorter. Let's create a small variation of this script that is best used for snakes, worms, dragons, any creature that wishes to retain its form and curvature when static or when it changes speed. Let's create a new script called Tentacle2, which replaces the first we just made. I'll copy the contents of the tentacle script and paste them in here. I'll remove the trail speed variable and then remove this smooth damp line of code, replacing it by these two here. We're calculating the target pose 
by adding to the previous point the distance between it and the current point, normalized so that the value is between 0 and 1, and finally multiplying with target distance so again points don't all bunch up. In other words, here we have point 1, it detects the direction towards the point 0 as well as the distance and moves towards it along that direction, pausing when it reaches target distance, same for point 2, to point 1, and so on. It will all become clear and easy in just a moment. I'll copy all the settings shown here onto this component, and then remove the tentacle script. Again, target distance dictates how far apart each point on the line renderer is from the previous one, whereas smooth speed will act on how fast the tentacle comes to a halt. For example, with a smooth speed value of 0.2, you'll notice the tentacle still takes a little bit of time to completely stop after the head itself. However, if we decrease this to something like 0.001, the whole tentacle feels a lot more snappy and responsive. So play around with that, this allows for a nice variety. What's awesome is that you don't need to limit yourself to only line renderers for visuals. For example, say I wanted a spiky ball at the tip of my character's tail. I'll drag and drop one in the scene and head into my script. I'll make a public transform variable called tail end and set the position of that equal to the position of the last element in my vector2 segment pose array. I'll drag and drop the spiky ball in the inspector, and as you can see, it follows the tip. We can take this even further by making, for example, several body parts. Each one should follow a certain element in the segment pose array. So I'll make a transform array called body parts and set each body parts transform equal to the corresponding vector 2. The reason I do minus 1 here is because my array starts at 0, but this i value is set to 1. Now I can drag and drop all those body parts in the inspector and you'll see we get a stylish result. You may very well want each body part to rotate and face the previous body parts. You can easily do so by making a body rotation script that looks like this. Add that to every body part and drag and drop in the inspector the correct parts. So for example on body part 1 you'll drag and drop the head for targets. On part 2 you can drag and drop part 1, for part 3 drag and drop part 2 and so on. This is a basic example where each body part looks the same, but there's no reason not to go wild and create fascinating creatures. You can have the tip look different from the middle just by changing the sprite visuals. Look at these elegant wings I made simply using this feather sprite. You'll probably notice that your character looks a little weird when starting out. All his body parts bunched up at a position of 0 on x and y. So I recommend you call a reset pose function in start or awake. In this function you simply loop through all your tail's points and add some distance between them so they aren't glued together when the game starts. Hopefully you can see how satisfying and easy this trail creation is. Experimentation is key here, so don't give up too quickly if you don't get the right results. With a little pushing and prodding, you'll be able to create very satisfying creatures, hair, tails, tentacles, dragons, whatever. This video is sponsored by indie developer and YouTuber Thomas Brush. He's been making indie games for pretty much every platform for the last decade including his latest game, Neversong, on Nintendo Switch and Steam. Thomas had to work extremely hard, but now makes six figures a year to support his family and studio. He let me try out his latest project, a comprehensive online platform called Full Time Game Dev, with over 800 students, and there's just so much to learn here. Not only will you learn how to actually make a game from scratch, but you're also going to learn how to make money with your game. You'll learn about publishers, crowdfunding, building a personal brand, marketing, bundles, and a strategic method to securing a slot on the Steam front page. There's a massive 40% discount for the first 300 students that use the link in the description and the coupon code NOAH. Click below if you're interested and begin your indie game dev journey. Thanks for watching. Cheers.